मॉर्निंग सैयद Okay, I have sent one link. Uh, have you answered that? I have put one link in both boys group and girls group. Uh, there are five questions. Sankar Naik. Good morning. Mm, Basta. Mm, good morning. Good morning. Hmm. Tell me your marks also. You have opened that link. I think uh, you have answered five questions and you have submitted that. I think so. Hmm. Venkat Reddy. Hello. Good morning. Have you got twenty out of twenty? Gautam Sesen, good morning. Forty by forty, sir, in link. I got uh, nine. Nobita, how many marks you got? Welcome, sir. Sir, I am Ashka Senior Inter. Okay, right. Harshita. Okay, good morning. Praharshita. Praharshita. Harshita. I got twenty, sir. Three there. Okay, right. Very good. Okay, yesterday I sent ten bits, and this morning, just now, a uh, few minutes back, uh, I have sent one link. In that, there are five bits. Uh, I gave five bits. Okay, most of the students got twenty out of twenty. Okay, right. Very good. Mm, have you got all the Uh, examples of animal kingdom. Sankar Naik, twenty marks. Okay, very good. Musini, twenty marks. So good. Good morning, uh, Patan. Sudhir, I got twenty, sir. Uh, Sri, the sorry. Sri, I got twenty. Sir, okay, very good. Okay, many students got twenty by twenty. In yesterday's exam, I hope you got forty out of forty. Okay, uh, there are two key mistakes. I send those two. Okay, good morning, all. Let us start uh, today's class. in yesterday's class we learned our uh, remaining examples uh, reptilian examples aves examples and mammalian examples kitesh reddy was sir uh, how can we join in that group sir okay, i will tell you later venkat reddy 20 marks okay right very good in yesterday's class we learned examples of reptilia aves And mammalia. Okay, after that, I told you what is meant by habitat. What are the different? What are the two major habitats? Aquatic habitat and uh, a terrestrial habitat. Aquatic habitat again we can divide into three types based on the salinity of the amount of salt present in it. Okay, there is a okay marine habitat, freshwater habitat. Okay, what is another one? Okay. Brackish water habitat. Brackish water we find in Etchuri. Etchuri is the place where river joins the sea. 
okay there there will be salt fluctuations especially the organisms which can tolerate a high salt concentration those are called urihaline organism such organisms only can survive in that uh, brackish water and fresh water has less than 5% of salt concentration is less and as compared to the marine water marine water has 30 to 35% of salt concentration is very high so in order to survive in these different types of water brackish water marine water fresh water organisms uh, have to undergo some ad adaptations okay those adaptations in detail you will be learning later in ecology pushpa hmm. lata hi good morning neshwant reddy where is the exam link sir that i sent that link to a newly joined uh, uh new batch junior inter batch boys and girls okay today's topic first i start with the habit we learned yesterday habitat aquatic habitat and terrestrial habitat okay now come to habits okay we have different uh, people have different habits okay animals also animals jump to across different phyla they have various habit okay they some live in group na uh, some live alone some live in is one place sedentary some are free swimming some are parasitic some are free living they do not harm at all okay like that uh, okay we, we we study these all things uh, of animals in habits in habits okay let us first start with the porifera porifera are sessile that means these organisms are these organisms are they live in one place as i said we can also in another word here sedentary sedentary that mean these animals do not move okay, they always attached to one substratum okay porifera the organisms belong to porifera are commonly called sponges they are sessile or sedentary that means they do not move from one place to another place either they live in colony or they live in okay alone they can live alone okay that means a uh, uh, sedentary okay they can live alone or they can live in colonies next come to the nidarians some of the nidarians are sessile some of the nidarians are free swimming okay what does it mean Okay, some of the nidarians like you know okay, nidarian generally okay uh, you will learn more about that one later in nidaria phylum also called as cylindrata phylum okay some of the organisms are polyp some of the organisms are they have two body forms polyp and medusa polyp and medusa okay polypoid organisms they attach to one substratum they do not move okay they are sessile whereas medusa form example arelia arelia is example for medusa form okay those medusaite forms they can free they are umbrella shape they can free they can swim freely they are free swimming whereas hydra adamsia okay these are examples for sessile they attach to one substratum and they do not move at all in as nidarian some of the nidarians live okay solitary that means they live alone solitary and some of the nidarians they live in colonies Okay, now come to the next one. Okay, so nidarians are some are solitary. Solitary means they live alone, single. And here nidarians they live in colonies. Nidarians live in uh, some of the nidarians live in colonies. Next come to the tenophora. Tenophores are some of the tenophores are solitary. That means they are they do not live in colonies. They live alone. and they are free swimming they are not sessile they are not sessile they are free swimming and they live alone what are the tenophores examples pleurobrachia and tenoplana pleurobrachia and tenoplana okay, these are solitary or free swimming they live alone and they swim freely now come to the platyhelminthes okay these are mostly endoparasites okay what i mean by parasite there are some of the animals which are parasite which depend on others for example head lice tarla unde pet head lice is a ectoparasite leech is ectoparasite and some of the tinea is a endoparasite okay 
flatty filament these are commonly called flat worm and these are commonly these are endo parasites endo parasites that live inside the body next one is turbellaria in flatty helminth is there are three classes are there okay i will tell you turbellaria trematoda cestoda in turbellaria especially there are three classes in flatty helminth is phylum okay three classes are here turbellaria trematoda cestoda in trematodes and cestodes are parasitic whereas turbellaria the organisms belong to turbellaria class are free living that mean they do not harm they do not cause disease example planaria next phylum is nematoda or ascelminthes okay some of these are free living they do not harm okay uh, i told you one example ceno raptatis elegans you study in intermediate second year human genome project okay ceno raptatis elegans which is also a nematode it is a free living nematode non pathogenic it does not harm us whereas the remaining are parasites okay remaining you learned three examples ascaris ankylostoma ocrearia okay these are okay, these are parasites okay these are parasites you might have learned in botany especially those who have completed first year and second year uh, intermediate okay they might have come across some bcs in plants Okay, or these nematodes are also called bcs in plant, and they are also parasites in animals. For example, ascariasis, chinna pillallo, nulli purugal undai. Okay, round worm sanna. Okay, they belong to. They cause a disease called ascariasis. Ascariasis, they belong to this one. Okay, these are parasites on plants, or they are parasites on animals. some of the nematodes are free living i told you one example ceno raptatis elegans which is a nematode but it is a not it is not a pathogenic it is a free living non pathogenic nematode next phylum is annelida mostly these are free living for example earthworm okay they do not cause any harm and example see another example leeches hyrodinaria leech it is a ecto parasite which has suckers the suckers help in sucking the bread also okay hold fast organ to attach to the they also help in locomotion also in arthropoda some of the arthropods are parasites you know many arthropods ticks on dogs and uh, you cope pods on marine fishes you learn head lice head lice tallo unde pel okay they also belong to arthropoda they are ecto parasite the some of the arthropods are parasite some are free living they do not cause any harm butterfly look uh, those next mollusca almost all are free living okay they do not cause any disease they are not harmful almost all echinodermata parasites are not present here in this phylum there are no parasites next one sea lilies sea lilies are sessile Okay, here these are also sessile. Okay, Porifers are sessile, and sea lilies, especially Echinodermes antidon, sea lily, antidon, sea lily. It is a sessile. But remaining starfish, those are free moving, free swimming. Others are free moving. Others are free moving. They can swim. But sea lily, you learn scientific name antidon. it is a sessile that means it is attached it has a stalk with that it is attached to the substrate hemichordate some of the hemichordates are called here rhabdoplura example rhabdoplura or some are solitary that means they live alone single solitary and and these hemichordates are free or free they can live freely or they can live in burrows tubicolous tubes a tubicolous okay example a uh, tirobranchia okay which lives in okay tubes they make in the water they make some tubes okay in those tubes they live in those tubes like the nearest also tubicolous polychaeta okay those annelids also that is one of the class in annelid okay this is about habits okay what about the card data in cardata also there are some parasites can you tell me some parasites those who have finished the uh, intermediate first year and second year if there are any 
if they are watching this class okay there are some parasites in uh, carteta phylum also ex uh, you know cyclostomata all almost most of the uh, living cyclostomates are they are ectoparasites on some fishes okay that is the first point in cyclostomata class in ncert test book okay so cyclostomate they have sucking circular and cyclo cyclo circular so mouth they have circular mouth okay they attach to the they live as ectoparasites here also you may take to these are endoparasite cyclostomes are ectoparasites on fishes okay that means there are some fishes in the card uh, there are some parasites in the cardata phylum also okay most of the cardates are okay, free living okay, they do not cause any disease they are not parasite okay that about the habit means the lifestyle of an organism the way it lives whether it is parasitic whether it is living alone whether it is living in colonies okay that we call those things come under habit yesterday we learned habit tag that means the place where an organism resides or lives is the habitat okay there are mainly two habitats aquatic habitat terrestrial habitat okay, uh, next one habits things it is a lifestyle of an organism how do they live do they live alone or do they live in colony or do they uh, are they free swimming or they are sessile or sedentary they attach to one plane are they parasitic okay or not okay, these all things next some of these organisms are sanguivores sanguivores can you uh, can you uh, send me one example for sanguivore which is sanguivore can you type in your answer which is a sanguivore what is meant by sanguivore what is meant by sanguivore okay you know frugivore parrot eats uh, fruits it is a frugivore okay you know sparrow sparrow feeds on grains that is a granivore okay you know earthworm feeds on detritus that is detritivore okay next one okay uh, uh, cow buffalo they eat grass okay that is called herbivore mosquito okay right mosquito very good sanguivore aruna gave right answer very good mosquito is a sanguivore leech is a sanguivore sanguivores means blood sucking animals which feed on blood sanguivores you know uh, earthworm is a detritivore okay you know examples for carnivores and uh, omnivores so human beings are omnivores okay these all things come under habitats okay right we up to now we have completed from porifera phylum to cardata phylum habitat and habits okay now come to the organization very important uh, uh, topic okay very uh, we can expect some bits in neat exam from these two diagrams which are given in state test book as well as ncert test book after finishing this organization next i move on to the levels of organization protoplasmic level of organization cellular level of organization tissue level of organization organ level of organization organ system level of organization in these phyla in which phyla we find okay uh, uh, those cellular level of organization tissue level of organization okay let us see that okay first let us say two types of organization here uh, diploblastic organization and triploblastic organization diploblastic and triploblastic Okay, diploblastic organization. Okay, the word itself it is telling die means a two. Okay, in some of the animals, during their embryonic state, all the cells are arranged in two primary germ layers. The cells in the embryo are arranged into two primary germ layers. okay the animals in which the cells in the embryonic stage are arranged into two germ primary germ layer such animals are called diploblastic animals what do we call them diploblastic animals okay diploblastic animals two phyla come under diploblastic diploblastica diploblastic phyla okay, in diploblastic phyla observe this diagram Okay, there are. This is the one of the germ layer, which is the outermost layer. This is called ectoderm. What is this one? Ectoderm. And this one is 
this is called endoderm endo do ectoderm and endoderm in between these two you may expect that there is a mesoderm but here mesoderm is not present here mesoglia is present what is mesoglia okay mesoglia is a, a gelatinous substance and a sticky ga unde oka substance gelatinous substance it is present in between ectoderm and endoderm in between these two what is present mesoglia is present very important top so it is given in ncert test book also in between ectoderm and endoderm okay what is present mesoglia is present in which animals in which animals the animals belong to the phylum okay there are no germ layers here there are no germ layers here that means porifera phylum okay porifera phylum it is not a diploblastic diploblastic word starts from nidaria nidaria and another phylum stenophora okay these two are okay these two are okay nidaria Okay, nidaria here, okay, nidinophora, tinophora, and nidaria. Okay, these two phyla, tinophora and nidaria. Okay, tinophora and nidaria. Okay, nidaria and tinophora. Okay, these two are diploblastic phyla. That means, okay, okay. Sometimes one well, phyla or kunda examples are there. Which of the following animal is diploblastic and then? After we reach a tinophora on two examples, pleurobrachy and tinophora. And then we must make examples in a pinch channel. Okay, then we can tell you tinophora diploblastic, tinophora diploblastic. I am going to tell you tinophora already you learned two examples. PC, I code, I gave you one code, personal computer PC, pleurobrachy and C. C and the first letter silent, tinophora. Okay, those two are diploblast. Next come to Nidaria. In Nidaria, you we learned eight examples. A P A P, Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, H M G O. Okay, Aplysia, sorry, Arilia, Adamsia, Pennatula, Pisalia. A P A P completed. H Hydra, M Mindrina, G Gorgonia, O Ubiria. Okay, these all. Okay, now you can go ten example chapter. Ten example. He, he, these all exam animals are diploblastic animals. Diploblastic phyla example are given by Nidaria and Tinophora. What are the diploblastic phyla? Nidaria and Tinophora. What are the diploblastic animals? You have to ask those ten examples are diploblastic animals. Okay, now it is uh, it is clear. I think. Okay, in porifera, in porifera there are no germ layers. There are no germ layers here. Okay, now come to the remaining phyla. Okay, observe here once again. Okay, this is what is this one? Ectoderm. This is endoderm. In between these two, there is no. Okay, third germ layer. Third germ layer is not present. The third germ layer in, instead of that, what is present? Mesoglia, which is a gelatinous substance. Sometimes, okay, there may be some substance. Some maybe uh, some cells are present here. Maybe some cells are present. Okay, those cells come either from either from ectoderm or from endoderm. If there are cells in the mesoglium, those cells come from either ectoderm or endoderm. But these are not for they are not part of the meso uh, mesoderm. They, that is not a mesoderm. Now come to the triploblastic. Okay, this is a triploblastic. A triploblastic animals. Okay, the word itself telling tri means three germ layer. Tri means three. Okay, triploblastic animals have three germ layers during their embryonic stage. Okay, three primary germ layers are present. Okay, you know those three. Okay, what are those three? Ectoderm, mesoderm, 
what is the another one this is the mesoderm what is this innermost one okay this is innermost one is called endoderm endoderm okay these the three primary germ layers are present okay these animals are called triploblastic animals they have ectoderm outer ectoderm inner inner endoderm and middle mesoderm very important bit here what is the third germ layer anagane manu lokala endod mes endoderm anko chedukane first pine ectoderm tarvata mesoderm tarvata the third germ layer is the what is that one mesoderm you have to note down this point the third box from which lesson this topic belongs to it is a part of animal kingdom in ncert in ncert in first unit it is the fourth chapter in state test book in first year zoology it is the structural organization in animal second unit in ncert state test book ap first year zoology ncert first year biology in first unit the fourth chapter is animal kingdom in that animal kingdom these all are basics to understand these all animal kingdom phylum but on examples and the terms man apply chestu untam okay man it uh, two years of zoology me chadavada appudu chaala chotla meeku diploblastic triploblastic ane terms vastu untayi okay triploblastic they have three germ layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm what is the third this is the third germ layer this is the third germ layer what is the third germ layer mesoderm is the third germ layer okay mesoderm is the third germ layer okay right now come to the examples of what are the triploblastic animals what are the triploblastic phyla and the remaining all phyla starting from platyhelminthes up to carnivore one more phylum here car data also i am writing here and these all are triploblastic phyla okay that means for example when i say cockroach cockroach either whether it is diploblastic or triploblastic cockroach belongs to which phylum arthropoda that means that is a triploblast when i say the word for example human beings human beings belong to the phylum chordata that means human beings are triploblastic okay when i say frog okay frog belongs to the phylum chordata frog also triploblastic okay these are all animals okay whatever may be that examples you have many examples from platyhelminthes to chordatum these all these all are triploblastic because they have three germ layers during their embryonic development for three primary germ layers are present for example if you take what is the significance of these germ layer all the organs in our body all the tissues of okay, our body mainly composed of four types of tissues our body is mainly composed of four types of tissues epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and neural tissue or nervous tissue for example if you take brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord come from which layer can you tell me brain is derived from which germ layer all the organs man body lo unna pray all the organs total mottam organs ee organ ani kalpi okay ee moodu germ layers lo edo oka dan nunchi form ay untundi okay can you tell me okay what is the what is the origin of our brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord origin is ectoderm can you tell me you know epithelial tissue what is the origin of epithelial tissue can you respond can you type in your answer can you type in your answer Tithesh Red, are you tell? Are you telling NCERT book or state book? It is a part of NCERT as well as state. Whatever may be the board, CBSE board or state board, it is a common topic. Exo, not exo, ectoderm. Kaushik Reddy, he gave answer ex ectoderm. He, he typed uh, exoderm, but it is uh, he means ectoderm. i think okay epithelial tissue is derived from ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm 
no correct okay so it is ready okay right uh, now i am going to ask you another one connective tissue you know blood okay we have ever around 5 liters of blood okay blood is derived from which germ layer blood is derived from which germ layer blood is derived from which germ layer okay blood is a blood is from mesodermal chinna venkateshwar lu okay very good correct answer mesodermal because blood is a connective tissue connective tissue is mesodermal in origin okay like that meek ala bits adugutaru very very important topic idi meek 2 years lo for example when i say digestive system respiratory system excretory system nervous system endocrine system you come across these terms see terms meek vastu untai treatment ga मीसोडर्म ओके राइट निहारिका रेड्डी ओके वेरी गुड मीसोडर्म के ट्रिक्लोब्लास्टिक एनिमल्स आर फ्रॉम प्लैटी हेलमेंटिस अप टू कार्डेटम ओके आई एम गोइंग टू कंक्लूड दिस वन ओके दिस टॉपिक ट्रिक्लोब्लास्टिक एंड ट्रिक्लोब्लास्टिक ऑर्गेनिज डिप्लो सम ऑर्गेनिजम्स शो सम ऑफ द एनिमल्स बिलोंग टू द फाइलम्स बिलोंग टू एनिमलिया किंगडम और मेटाजोवा दे शो डिप्लोब्लास्टिक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन some of the organism show triploblastic organization diploblastic organization example nidaria and tinophora phylum sadigithe sometimes what lo unna examples icha di organism diploblastic or triploblastic an adugutha second one come to the triploblastic here in diploblastic or which germ layer is absent what is which germ layer is absent in diploblastic organism which germ layer is absent in diploblastic organism answer is mesoderm is not present but which germ layer present here absent it is absent here but present here that is mesoderm this is the third germ layer mesoderm is the third germ layer diploblastic organisms from platyhel mundi here another important but what is the first triploblastic phylum the first triploblastic phylum is platyhel mundi what is the first triploblastic phylum the first triploblastic phylum is platyhelminthes okay sometimes they may ask you examples of platyhelminthes i told you teacher parent federation teacher okay uh, tinea solium okay parent planaria federation fasciola liver fluke okay those all are first triploblastic animals which belong to platyhelminthes another important point i would like to mention here symmetry the animals which have diploblastic organization they have they have radial symmetry they have radial symmetry okay our next topic is uh, symmetry the diploblastic organisms diploblastic organisms have radial symmetry that means you can cut that animal into two equal halves in any plane okay which can which passes through the central axis now come to the triploblast triploblastic organisms have okay there are some exceptions are there triploblastic organisms are mostly they exhibit bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry okay bilateral symmetry is exhibited by triploblastic animals Okay, bilateral. For example, if you take uh, human beings or cockroaches or earthworm, frog. Okay, you studied in intermediate first year. Those who have completed first year. Okay, you learned cockroaches. You learned uh, uh, frog. You learned uh, earthworm. Okay, those are, those are diploblastic animals. Okay, they are, they are triploblastic animal. They have bilateral symmetry. We also have bilateral symmetry. That means we can cut our body into two equal halves only in this plane. This is called mid sagittal plane. we cannot cut our body into two equal halves in this plane or in this plane or in this plane okay we cannot cut our body into two equal halves in any other plane only in this plane mid sagittal plane okay such animals are called the animals which have only one plane of symmetry okay, they are called bilaterally symmetrical animals all triploblastic animals except some examples are there for example if you take uh, echinodermates echinodermates in larval stage they are bilaterally symmetrical but in adult stage in adult stage they have a pentamerous radial symmetry 
and there are some snail snail during the larval stage it has bilateral symmetry in the adult stage they become asymmetrical there are some exception okay except that most of the triploblastic okay these all organism flat in have this group or data is also what type of symmetry bilateral symmetry bilateria or triploblastica bilateria is also called triploblastica okay diplo radial radiate is also called diploblastica because diploblastic organisms have what type of symmetry radial symmetry okay now i move i am going to teach you levels of organization now levels of organization in total we have five levels of organization as per ncert test book only four levels of organization are there okay, i mentioned those five levels of organization how many levels of organization are there Okay, now I am going to tell you one example. You have to tell me whether it is diploblastic or triploblastic. Okay, I would like to know whether you got the topic or not. Uh, okay, the example here is uh, uh, leech. Leech, whether it is diploblastic or triploblastic. Leech, whether it is diploblastic or triploblastic. A leech is diploblastic or triploblastic animal. Kaushik Reddy, okay, Rikitesh Reddy, right? Uh, leech uh, is a diploblastic. Uh, no, no, uh, right? Raju. Okay, right. The size the triploblastic leech is triploblastic because leech belongs to the phylum Annelida. Annelids are triploblastic. Platyhelminthes, Nematoda, Annelida. Okay, other than that, exams so example, study na puru analogy mein dhan apply che isko gali mundali. Okay, right. I am asking another example. Hydra. Hydra is diploblastic or triploblastic? Hydra is a diploblastic or triploblastic? Patan, Hydra is a triploblastic or diploblastic. Hydra is diploblastic because Hydra belongs to the phylum Cylindrata or Nidaria. Nidarians are the first diploblastic animals. First diploblastic animals. The phylum after Cylindrata or Nidaria that comes is the Tenophora. They are the last first diplo. The first diploblastic phylum is Cylindrata. Right? Okay. Right answer. Very good. Raju, Sliver Raju. Right. Very good. Uh, diploblastic and uh, Patan approach. Uh, diploblastic. Kaushik Reddy. Diploblastic. Okay. Very good. Okay. Now come to the levels of organization. There are five levels of organization. One is protoplasmic level of organization. Protoplasmic, protoplasmic level. Okay, is it visible to you? Okay, is it visible to you? Can you see this one? Cellular level. Cellular level of organization. Okay, right. Thank you. And tissue level, tissue level of organization. No, sir, it 
is not visible. Okay, three students gave SS, one student button, I hope she is telling not visible. Okay, tissue level, organ level, organ level, and organ system level. Organ system level. Okay, students. So, then in one of the topic, diploblastic and triploblastic. Uh, now and then I am using Telugu also. Okay, diploblastic and triploblastic topic complete. Yes, sir. Minna meko minna ante the past three days lo mik more than hundred examples there been sir. Ah, examples lo. Okay, any example. Okay, imagine any one example among those more than hundred examples around hundred. A example of a mere me brain low of a book example of pictures for the diploblastic or triploblastic and coaching chess for me. Okay, I'll take a look at the example of a really it's not saying a group of 100 examples low. How many which are diploblastic which are triploblastic you must know. Okay, diploblastic can be cylindrical and tino for a book. I example stop on a me for reference low aim lane so check on our nation. Okay, remaining all are remaining all are. Triplo plastic. Next one. You put e topic chapter levels of organization. E topic type in the other hundred examples, lo, more than hundred examples. Lo. Okay, which are cellular level organization? Maybe. Okay, what are the examples for tissue level of organization? What are the examples for organ level of organization? And what are the examples for organ system level of organization? I think we'll say you can get okay. We teach in a bit. Say you can get the e topic in chain. The levels of organization, protoplasmic level, cellular level, tissue level, organ level, and organ system level. The protoplasmic level of organization. A protoplasmic level of organization is exhibited by it is exhibited by amoeba. Okay, you know amoeba. Every one of you, okay, all the students uh, know about amoeba. Amoeba is a unicellular animal. Okay, it has a uh, protoplasm. There is ectoplasm, there is endoplasm, and there is a nucleus, there are cell organelles. Amoeba is it prokaryotic or eukaryotic? Amoeba is it eukaryotic or prokaryotic? Amoeba is it? Amoeba is not a diploblastic, not a triploblastic. Amoeba belongs to protozoa phylum. So amoeba is it eukaryote or prokaryote? Sridhar, prokaryotic. A Kaushik ready to give right answer. Prokaryotic. Correct answer is eukaryotic. Protozoa, protozoa. Okay, amoeba belongs to the phylum protozoa. Protozoans are eukaryotes. Prokaryotes belong to the kingdom Monera. Amoeba belongs to the protozoans, belong to the kingdom Protista. Protestants are uni, uh, eukaryotes. Amoeba is a eukaryote. It has a nucleus. I said it has nucleus. Prokaryotes do not have nucleus. They do not have well-developed nucleus. There is no nuclear membrane. Amoeba has well-defined nucleus. There is a nuclear membrane. There is genetic material. Okay, right. Okay, it is a protoplasmic level of formation. The single cell in amoeba can carry out all the basic functions like locomotion, reproduction, digestion, repro circulation, transportation. Okay, these all are carried out by a single cell here. Okay, this here. Okay, within this cytoplasm or protoplasm, okay, there are organelles. These organelles show division of flavor. That means nucleus controls, it controls all the functions of the other organelles. Okay, now this one mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell, and food vacuoles are there which help in digestion. 10th standard, you have learned contractile vacuola, maybe of contractile vacuola is osmoregulatory organelle. What is meant by osmoregulation? You have learned in 10th standard, okay, maintaining water and salt balance in a proper way. That is called osmoregulation. That means, 
Okay, there is a division of labor. Division of labor. That means each organelle is performing its own function, its own uh, uh, specified function. That means there is a division of labor at the organelles level. Okay, this is the lowest level of organization in the total animals. Total animals, whether it is unicellular or multicellular, in the total animals look lowest level of organization and the answer is protoplasmic level of organization is the lowest organization it is exhibited by protoplasm it is unicellular animal or a cellular animal like protozoans example amoeba okay these are the simplest proteins the protozoans are the simplest proteins what do you mean by proteins and they come by the telecoach Simplest protista, 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 one of the kingdom, five kingdom, Monira. Okay, uh, we take a proposal five kingdom classification. That the first kingdom, Monira, the second kingdom is protista. Okay, already what we know, already first year, second is Chazin Walu. Okay, protista is the second kingdom in which the protozoans are included. That's why these are the simplest protist in protista kingdom. No plants put on the unicellular plant. But yeah, plants look plant cell ki cell wall and the animal cell ki cell wall under the cover. These are the simplest proteins. Now come to the next level of formation, cellular level of formation. Cellular level of organization is exhibited by a multicellular animals. Multicellular. Multicellular animals. Okay, we may you may think that unique cellular organization anangane. Make unicellular and pinch of chum. The cellular organization is observed in multicellular animals. Not all in multicellular animals. Okay, cellular level of organization is exhibited by multicellular animals like only poriferans. Poriferans. In these animals, the animals which exhibit cellular level of organization, these are multicellular. That means many cells are present. When multi cells are many cells are when you may think that means all cells are the tissue and kunda, but here tissues are not formed. Because the organisms which exhibit cellular level of formation in these animals tissues are not present. Tissues are absent. The cells are not. There are many cells, but cells are not organized into tissues. A cellular level of organization is the lowest level of organization in the kingdom animalia. These points are very, very important. So, in that, in each country, entire animals low, entire animals low, lowest level of organization, whether it is multicellular or unicellular. Okay, up to answer in the protoplasmic level of organization. Okay, cellular level of organization, animalia kingdom low, lowest level and adequate specific. Level. Our metazoo of kingdom look, our animalia kingdom look, what is the lowest level of organization and the answer in cellular level of organization is the lowest level of organization in metazoa, in metazoa or in animal kingdom. Cellular level of organization is exhibited by poriferan. In poriferan, there are different types of cell. There are thesocyte which store food, which was given in previous neat exam. But it is not given in the textbook case whether it is not given. It is not in the state textbook as well as NCRT or LED, but it was given in the previous net exam. Okay, these polyphenols have different types of cells. Okay, they show division of labor at cellular level. Division of labor at cellular level. That means each cell performs its own specific function. I am telling you one cell here, tesocytes. Tesocytes. Okay, the function of this thesocyte is to store food. It stores food. It was given in neat exam. Thesocyte. Next one, there is a there is a pinacocyte. Pinacocyte. There is a porocyte. There is a porocyte. There is a coenocyte. Poinocyte. Poinocyte is also called. Anyone can you respond to this? This one. Poinocyte is also called. Those who have completed first year and second year, can you respond to that? Poinocyte is also called. Very very important. It was given in NEET exam 2017 NEET lo ichare din. Poinocyte is also called.
திருப்பத்தம்ம ஓகே ரைட் யூனிசில்லர் யூகேரியோட்டிக் ஆர்கானிசம் அமீபா ஓகே வெரி குட் ஆயிஷா ஓகே அமீபா இஸ் யூகேரியோட்டிக் சைட் யூகேரியோட்டிக் அண்ட் ஓகே ரைட் வெரி குட் சின்ன வெங்கடேஸ்வர் லு கிவ் தி ரைட் ஆன்சர் காலர் செல்ஸ் ஓகே கோயினோசைட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ कॉल्ड एज காலர் செல் very 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 important collar cells line than it says sir okay spongocil spongocil are central cavity in the porifers is called spongocil car atrium an kuda antam which is lined and also canals kuda untai sponges so tarvata porifera cheppeda pudu ostundi okay there are some canals also not only spongocil the canals as well as spongocil is lined by coenocyte which is which are also called as collar cells the coenocytes function and that with the okay there is a flagellum to me okay water sponges body local water move cheyadu ni help chestundi it also they also help in digestion kuda help chestai okay intracellular digestion takes place here okay digestion process lo kuda help chestu okay like that there are so many cells are present scleroblast is also present amebocytes are also totipotent cells amebocytes are also present and there are myocytes are also present okay many more cells are present these are the important cells i mentioned here okay one second i will repeat cellular level of organization cellular level of organization is the lowest level of organization this is the lowest level of organization in metazoa in metazoa metazoa means animal kingdom animalia king book pair animalia kingdom is also called metazoa okay this is the lowest organization in metazoans in animal is cellular level okay the it is cellular level of organization is present in multicellular animals okay these are tissue selection example poriferin poriferin so there is a, a cell a cells are aggregated cell cells are aggregated but tissues are not formed and cells so division of labor division of labor there are different types of cells the outer layer of the body wall coriferous body wall tarvata ostundi body wall lo outer layer lo pinacocytes and porocytes untai inner layer of the body wall consists of coenocyte or collar cells which line the spongocil and canals present in the body wall so cells so full now come to the next level tissue level of organization okay tissue level of organization ஜாக்கிர் ஹுசேன் காலர் செல்ஸ் அவினாஷ் ஓகே வெரி குட் காலர் செல்ஸ் கௌஷிக் ரெட்டி காலர் செல்ஸ் ஓகே ரைட் டிஷ்யூ லெவல் ஆஃப் ஆர்கனைசேஷன் டிஷ்யூ லெவல் ஆஃப் ஆர்கனைசேஷன் இஸ் எக்ஸிக்யூட்டட் பை ஓகே த டூ ஃபைலம் வாட் இஸ் விச் ஃபைலம் கம்ஸ் ஆஃப்டர் போரிஃபெரா விச் ஃபைலம் கம்ஸ் ஆஃப்டர் போரிஃபெரா கேன் யூ கிவ் ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் வெரி குயிக்லி which phylum comes after porifera okay right buddhesh gave right answer okay nidaria nidaria is also called silent rata the tissue level of organization is observed in silent rata silent rata also called as nidaria nidaria the another phylum is a tinophora tinophora the tinophores and silent rates they are diploblastic in the chapter meku they are diploblastic they have radial symmetry okay now i am telling here they have tissue level of organization now you know three points related to silent traits ki habitat chepan silent traits ki habit chepan silent traits ki level of organization they are diploblastic la diploblastic organization and triploblastic level of organization chepan next ikkada e level of organization tissue level of organization 
what type of symmetry untundo mottham ee five points nenu ikkada cover chesan cylindrates and medial cylindrate is also called as medialia okay another example another phylum tenophores okay, these are diploblastic these are diploblastic they have radial symmetry and they show tissue level of organization in these animals okay, what is the difference between these two in cellular level of formation in these animal the cells are functionally isolated cells are functionally isolated there is no coordination among the cells each cell perform its own function testocyte porocyte collar cell they perform their own function there is no coordination but here first time coordination co coordination has developed here because of evolution of nervous system nervous system first time evolved in this phylum very important one nervous system first time evolved in cylindrate there is a diffuse nerve net there are apolar neuron only cell body is present dendrite is absent axon is absent okay in 10th standard you learn in 10th standard you learn avinash i am uh, sada sri okay right good morning okay in 10th standard you learn neuron okay each neuron has three parts three uh, one is cyton axon and dendrite but in this phylum the organelles belong to this phylum cylindratum the nerve there is a diffuse nerve net is present nervous system first time evolved here okay, here the neurons are apolar neuron they have cell body no axon no dendrite okay that is the uh, okay here sensory cells also present statocysts are the sensory cells which help in balancing Okay, nerve cells and sensory cells evolved first time. Why I am telling that one here? I told you here. They show tissue level of organization. Okay, the, that means tissue group of cells. Okay, the, a group of cells can perform a single function with a coordination. That coordination is brought by nervous system. Nervous system. For example, man, inclo family members of five members or ten members or no. మన ఇంట్లో అందరి మధ్యలో గొడవలు రాకుండా కోఆర్డినేషన్ తీసుకురావడానికి మన పేరెంట్స్ ఉన్నారు మనకేమైనా గొడవలు వస్తే సర్ది చెప్పడానికి టు బ్రింగ్ కోఆర్డినేషన్ అమాంగ్ ద ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్ టు లీడ్ ది సక్సెస్ఫుల్ ఫ్యామిలీ వితౌట్ ఎనీ ట్రబుల్ లైక్ దట్ ఇన్ దీస్ యానిమల్స్ ఆల్సో టు బ్రింగ్ కోఆర్డినేషన్ అమాంగ్ ద టిష్యూస్ టు బ్రింగ్ కోఆర్డినేషన్ అమాంగ్ ద టిష్యూ దెర్ ఈస్ ఎ నర్వ్ సెల్ నర్వస్ సిస్టమ్ ఫస్ట్ టైమ్ ఎవాల్వ్ హియర్ బట్ ఇన్ cellular level of formation periphery lo there is no coordination among the cell cells are functionally isolated for example a kutumba or family lo parents are lack pothe the parents parent mother father lack pothe a parent a family anta kuda evar godavalde ante vallu there is no coordination among the family members because there is no parent okay like next one organ level of organization organ level of organization is formed in what do you mean by an organ what is meant by an organ what is meant by organ organ is a like a group of tissues for example if you take our heart if you take our stomach let us take our stomach look okay, our stomach has epithelial tissue stomach has connective tissue stomach has nervous tissue stomach has muscular tissue Okay, that means an organ is a collection of a collection of different tissues which performs a specific function for example our stomach which has a specific function digestion of food churning of food when in the 10th class lo chadivaru stomach is a churner stomach is a mixer which mixes the food so powerful peristalsis occurs first year second year vallu chadivaru first year ayipoyin vallu okay ఎస్పెషల్ సెకండ్ ఇయర్ వాళ్ళు హ్యూమన్ డైజెస్టివ్ సిస్టమ్ లో పవర్ఫుల్ పెరిస్టాల్సిస్ సక్కర్స్ ఇన్ అవర్ స్టమక్ ఓకే నెక్స్ట్ వాట్ ఇస్ ఆర్గానిజం ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఇఫ్ యూ టేక్ అవర్ హార్ట్ అవర్ హార్ట్ హ్యాస్ వన్ మజిల్ యూ నో కెన్ యూ మెన్షన్ ద మజిల్ ప్రజెంట్ ఇన్ అవర్ హార్ట్ ఓకే ఎవరి వన్ నోస్ ఐ థింక్ నేమ్ ద మజిల్ ప్రజెంట్ ఇన్ అవర్ హార్ట్ నేమ్ ద మజిల్ ప్రజెంట్ ఇన్ అవర్ హార్ట్ name the muscle present in our heart okay right very good cardiac muscle name the muscle present in our stomach name the muscle present in our stomach 
श्रीधर कार्डिक मजिल कार्डिक मजिल नो नो नेम द मजिल प्रेजेंट इन अवर स्टमक What type of muscle is present in the wall of our stomach? No response. Yes. Don't hesitate to make mistake. We learn by making mistake. For example, if the cardiac muscle is there, okay, the pain is there. They give uh, response. Okay, the answer is. Uh, Mucus. Okay, no. Okay, the correct answer is smooth muscles. In our visceral organs, we have smooth muscle. Okay, smooth muscle is present. Okay, pattern. Okay, very good. Smooth muscle is present in our stomach. Cardiac muscle. Okay, in the kidney organ, and the organ, and the organ is a collection of tissues. Okay, man, stomach look smooth muscle. Stomach has epithelial tissue called mucosal epithelium. Stomach has uh, uh, submucosa and a layer into the third one. Make submucosa layer a loose connective tissue. Only man stomach lo autonomous nervous system, entric nervous system. Only tenth class lo meet. Today we are man called first class lo bitted again. Okay, second brain in our body. Only the second brain of our body is uh, uh, ENS, entric nervous system, present in our stomach also. Elementary can all learn to. Okay, right. This organ is a. It is an aggregation of tissues. An aggregation of tissue. An aggregation of cells. A group of cells is tissue. Okay, organ is an aggregation of tissue. I think some of the tissues together form an organ. If you take nose, if you take our eye, eye is an organ. Eye consists of epithelial tissue. Our eye consists of muscular tissue. Eye consists of connective tissue. Our eye consists of nervous tissue. You know the nerve which goes from our eye to brain. That is called optic nerve. Optic nerve. Okay, that means an organ is a collection of uh, tissues, an aggregation of tissues which performs a specific function. Our heart pumps the blood. Our eye is useful for vision. Stomach helps in digestion. Look like that they have a specific function. Organ level of organization first time evolved in platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes. Okay, according to NCERT test book, NCERT test book prakaram, okay, state also, okay, what is called platinum element is the organ and organ system and could I tell you, what is platinum element is something, okay, we write platinum element is in both organ level as well as in organ system level. Okay, now come to the organ system level, which is the highest, highly evolved level of organization is the Organ system level of organization. This is the highest. This is exhibited by organ system level of organization is exhibited from the flatworms up to cartilage. Okay, that means platy flatworms, platy helminthes, okay, nematoda. That means ascalminthes, okay, anlida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata, hemicartilage, cartilage. In this all organisms, we find what type of organization? Organ system level of organization. Okay, I am concluding today's session. Okay, tomorrow I will uh, again briefly uh, recap about these points or the different levels of organization. What is the highest level of organization in animalium? What is the lowest level of organization? Okay, I will uh, briefly recap uh, in the tomorrow uh, class at the beginning of the class. Okay, today too I will uh, uh, send you ten bits, a link containing ten bits. Okay, respond to those bits. Okay, uh, I am ending the session. Okay, chipping work progress ne chay kunda post kon chay kunda heroes work ke aro chadwandi examples sa ninka rano aur le aro nante chadwandi. Next, diploblastic organization, triploblastic organization, eval pump a link low, evening pump a link low, diploblastic main for a bit sadutan plus uh, examples, uh, habitat, gurinchi, habit, habitat, and examples. Okay, right.